You know what else I, I like? What was I going to say, man? I'm so motherfucking high right now. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> My nigga, I love you, man. Yeah. When you see me cooling girls, you need to step aside. It ain't enough room to fit you all in my ride because of first come, first serve basis. Boy, Rev Run was the hardest thing moving in the 80s, you hear me? <laughs> Oh, man. If you don't know, you won't know. You inside the GGN News Network. I'm your host with the most finding Nemo, aka Nemo Hoes. And today I got a real special guest on my show. The one and only, the godfather of hip hop, Russell Simmons, is in the house. Oh, man. It's a pleasure what to be Russell? here, baby. Nah, man, it's a pleasure to have you here. And, I mean, you know me, I got to put one in the air. You mean just celebrate the But when I walked in the, in the earlier, I seen that you was blazing already, so it wasn't it was not surprising me, but. But you know, you were one of the originators of this hip hop thing, and you was one of the originators of smoking this thing early in the game, too. Yeah, I smoked a lot of water, too. A lot of dust and all For that. For real? Yeah, of course. Of course, I smoked a lot of weed. You took a dip in the pool? I used to live in the pool, <laughs> nigga. I was a dust head there, man, you know? I mean, I'm sorry to say, that's my brains now. I can't remember shit. Damn. So that what year was that when that came like oh, famous? Man, water was big, like you know, and well, water's still big, but you know, when I was smoking that shit, that was, you know, college and all the way up to everything, all through all of making that record. Shit, I smoked a bag of dust and, and, and was like, yo, your Adidas went to school and your Adidas went to, you know what I mean? Like went on college. The the live aid shit. We mm -hmm. had just did it and I smoked a bag of dust and told Rev and Rev wrote the song, My Adidas. Oh my but it was God. I was I mean, I got a long history with that shit, and that's why I'm a monk now, damn near, you know. Yeah, but see, to be able to make that full 360 transformation is life. Now you looking good, you living good, you look like you going backwards, like you going like 20 something years old right now. I'm older than a motherfucker. I know, you know, I know, I know, but I'm saying you look like you going backwards, like your age is running that way instead of that way. What is the trick to it? Is it what you eat, I think the way you work out? Kid, you do whatever you want to do, and you still look young. You got like a little young vibe, and and you know you glow, radiate youth. You know, so. Mm -hmm. It's really it's in your head a lot of it, but yeah, I meditate twice a day. I do yoga every single day. You know, I'm I don't eat no animal. I don't fuck with no animal product. No dairy, egg, fish, none of that shit. I don't eat none of that. So a lot of that helps, you know, a lot. But it's the spirit that keeps you alive, you know. Mm -hmm. And what got you into being a vegetarian? Like, cause I know you started off, you know, doing what we normally do. I but what got you? and all that shit, chitlins, all the fuck, niggas, <laughs> I eat everything. Um, it, the vegetarian thing came, you know, after practicing yoga, you know, for a few years, and my gurus, you know, you know, it's like gurus remove of darkness, like, and so, they, you know, we talk a lot about animals and the 40 billion animals that suffer every year that are made to be born to suffer, and then they fuck up the environment, they take all the resources so niggas starve, they take all the water so niggas thirsty, they take everything, and all they do is make us sick. So, and it's the worst comic disaster in the history of the world. He can't get worse than that, than, than killing 40 billion animals. Make them born so we can kill them. Because, mm. you know, they wouldn't, the cows, let me give you one thing and we're gonna move off this because niggas get mad when I start, you know, rambling about this subject, but the cows alone, their farting is more than all the trains, planes, and automobiles multiplied by two in terms of ruining the environment and the ozone, ozone layer. That's a UN report. Wow. And we make those cows. Them cows ain't just born naturally, that yeah. many cows. We're creating them. We create that suffering, we create that sickness, and we destroy our environment, and we burn up all our resources just so niggas can get sick eating, eating shit that makes them, you know. Barbecue ribs and, damn, that's hard to get rid of that filet mignon and barbecue ribs Kid, and T-bone steak. It's just something I acknowledge, you know, and we all acknowledge different shit. Like, we do foul shit and we do other shit that's not so foul. That's one of the things I learned that I don't wanna, you know, participate in, so. Mm. Well, getting on to some music shit, the movie Crush Groove, is that a, is that a real? That's way before my time, man, I can't it, speak on that. No, is that a real <laughs> depiction? Cause when we see uh, Blair Underwood That nigga screen. ruined my first 10 years in the record business, <laughs> man, cause I used to go places and bitch, I mean, girls would be like, you know, <laughs> where the fuck is Russell at? You know what I mean? I used to have a ball spot, you know, because I was high as fuck. I used to sniff a lot of cocaine, too, and that make you lose your, your nervous system, you lose your hair. So I was fucked up back then, you know, and I'd show up somewhere, and they'd be looking for Blair Underwood. <laughs> like, and that's a handsome motherfucker, that pretty bastard would, would be somewhere, you know, making another movie by then, but he ruined days of my life, man, when I would show up trying to, you know, being you, just doing just you. Just trying to be me, you know, they said, oh, that nigga's you, where's he at? I'm with that old school shit, man. That old yeah. school was what, what bred me, man. I, I, I grew up a real student of hip hop. Even being from Eastside Long Beach, we, we studied all the great rappers from New York and how they got down and they style and they swag. I mean, that, that shit was impressive to us, the way, they, the way that they held the crowd. Like, MCing was the shit back then. 
not just making a dope song and bringing a hundred niggas on stage with you and everybody singing your shit, but just being able to control the crowd and freestyle and yeah. be right now, talk about what's happening right now. It's good, you know, it's good watching what they became too. All them dudes that came from era, not all obviously, but a lot of them, they really go up, they really became good dudes and they really didn't fall off. Like, you know, athletes have like a tendency to uh, not to carry on, you know, once mm -hmm. they just stop playing or, but the rappers, you know, and other people, other stars that we have, you know, God knows Hollywood throws away black stars like they ain't nothing. But the rap stars, you know, Curtis Blow probably in Europe somewhere talking about, you know, doing that intro he used to have, that fly intro. He's, people yeah. in the place, the base in the face. First place in the rap race. You know, that yeah. shit sounds Clever, weird, so shit. good to your ear. Have no fear, Curtis Blow is it's here. <laughs> that shit. He's probably somewhere in Europe doing that right now, you know. And, and a lot of them is on the road and, you know, they paying bills and they keeping their family right and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's good to see a lot of them, you know, where they at right now. You know, they still still hustling and they still doing what they love. What was it like growing up in the Simmons household as a kid? You know, I had a, my father was very cool. You know, he was a real educated dude. And, you know, we lived in a lower middle class neighborhood. It got destroyed by heroin. We became the heroin capital of Queens, Hollis, Queens. And, but it was, you know, we moved, I was real young, we moved in, there was some white people there, a few, but they left, but then, I mean, you know, gentr you know gentr mm -hmm. reverse of gent gentrification. But, and it became really, you know, a, a little struggle. You know, there was, uh, you know, there was gangs, but we didn't have, we used to, we had bitch ass gang members. I mean, they, they kill a nigga, hung his <laughs> colors up in the park, and nobody came out for two days. You know, <laughs> so, so the neighborhood was, you know, a place, you know, like any other neighborhood where niggas come out of a little struggle, but, the, the house itself, I started telling my father, the educated man, but he was a very street kind of dude. Like he used to refer, back then, you know, you didn't have a mustache. You, my father would call them pussy lip niggas. <laughs> like niggas without a mustache. You know, and he, but he became, eventually became a professor of black history. He's a very smart man, but a very street dude. So he was really, you know, he was cool with me. Like he was somebody helped. And he raised three, three good men. My, my brother, you know, he'd been through some shit, but became an artist and was on the board of the Brooklyn Museum. And he's a real, you know, prominent member and runs a charity and so forth. And then Rev is a reverend, you know, like that. And he raised a good family. So he did a good job. My father did a real good job, you know. My father was, she, his poetry was like, it was real. He was an activist too, you know. So that's where Ron get that from. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he's always my been. My brother was an artist, my brother was an artist. The older brother's a painter, you know. So we're like an artistic family. You know, that's why, I guess why, you know, I love artists, you know. I mean, I produce a lot of records. I wrote some songs, but really, I, I work with artists, I fucks with artists, because I like, you know, I like the energy, I like the freedom. I don't like the way the world is so blocked out, you know, like they, they was yelling at me about rap lyrics and shit, you know, but it's like, they don't like the sexual content. Or, uh, niggas think about, this is real talk uh, uh, research, 36 seconds a man thinks about sex, every 36 fucking seconds, some sexual thought. Right? So when a song like ass and titties, I mean laugh when I hear that, so I see it in the movie made me laugh, I hear more, I hear more ass and titties, that's what niggas be thinking about. So why can't artists say what the fuck niggas is thinking? That's an artist's job. What I want to know is LL Cool J. Yeah. How did you find that nigga? Did you know he was going to be the shit when you found him? No, he sent a tape to Def Jam and Ad Rock found him. Ad Rock bought the tape. From Beastie Boys? Ad Rock found the tape, yeah. Oh, Ad Rock wow. bought the tape to, to Rick. And Rick bought the tape to me, and we were sitting in the office playing a beat. And it was, I need a beat, but it was not this I need a beat that you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rick produced it and made it even better. But it was always, you know, the lyrics are the same. And they said, insurmountable beat, subject of discussion. It was like after, he was inspired by, if you listen to commentating, illustrating, description, giving, adjective experts, analyzing mm. somebody's music, he liked that shit. And so you can see here that how it influenced him. And Todd was swift with words. Mm -hmm. like, he, So, you know, he came from that 5% of shit, the culture at least, you know. And mm -hmm. so his, he wanted to use them words and, you know, and, and really say shit in a way that people wasn't saying it. And that was, I need a beat. Yeah, that shit was hard. It was hard as fuck. We put that shit out, our first Def Jam record. When we put it out. That's the first record y'all released on Def Jam? That's it. I need a beat. And we put this shit out, kid. We went to a store, a record store, the hot store, and it was in plastic, right? And the Def Jam logo was on. He said, they sold a box of these. I said, what the fuck is it? He said, I don't know. I said, how you gonna know? <laughs> it's not on the radio. It's not. They didn't have no rap. They didn't even have no rap hip-hop show played yet. It wasn't on Mr. Magic or none of that. It was just, it was in the box. Mm -hmm. And niggas was buying it, you know, it was amazing. So like, that's what I always say about hot shit. You can't hold that, you can't hold it, you know. If it's a hot rock, it's gonna burn through the shit. Yeah. 
and like you were saying about making rappers. Yeah, it's hard. I can't I can't seem to make a rap star as opposed to me making a football star. By me creating my football league, I've created over 50, you know, little stars that's going to high school and college and eventually NFL, but in the hip hop world it's so hard to make someone or create another star on the same level as me. Well, ain't nobody on the level with you, Snoop. I ain't I ain't come here to, you know, <laughs> to gas you up, but you Snoop motherfucking dog, nigga. They ain't gonna make no more Snoop dogs, nigga. For That's real? it. They don't make them no more? The fuck no, nigga. You the only one of them motherfuckers. Damn. Hi, I'm Stormy Friends, and I'm reporting the weather today from New York. Today, we had an earthquake caused by my twerking. <laughs> <laughs> it made an earthquake. I don't know if that's possible, but I don't know anything about weather. I'm just here. <laughs> Nigga know the name, call me AU, don't take the jet of vein like my brother Jesus I'm a new age nigga, cry shit, no news I'm raising up in the go setting my do the loose And spitting no stupid shit in my lyrics, straight truth I'm painting the city, red riding around, making moves I'm putting in work, and over time, why they snooze Been rapping a year, but what it sound like to you? A nigga been blessed since he came out the womb Now the world blessed too, cause I'm the influence Fooling with the truth, kick knowledge in the booth In the streets with the G's, the real nigga salute I'm true for the stars, I landed on planet X Never had a plan B, I always knew I was next Sex, now them haters upset, throw the checks Cause I laid up a chest team full of architects You know the world with haters, man, no Murray Bob from get lit. I made another song for them smoker dogs, so proceed. You know, I got three internet companies now. I got one called Narrative. I know y'all niggas think this means nigga, <laughs> but it means narrative. You don't think that means, look at that. You might think that's, that's right, end slash, right? Right, but because yeah. I'm that type of nigga that would put the N slash, you would just said, said nigga, you would be nigga, you know what I mean? Yeah, like you left the words got, out. I ain't got no wiggle room, so. But, <laughs> but this N means narrative. It's a digital solutions company, created account content and campaigns from brands. And then the other one is uh, globalgrind.com, you know that, that tells the news and, and at the same time does a lot of entertaining, but a lot of the news that needs to be told to community, like we created the whole Trayvon thing and that. So social media is powerful. And then, now I got the thing that we, all day, every day, we shooting content for all deaf digital. Mm. And that becomes all deaf music, that becomes all deaf poetry, that becomes all deaf comedy. And so there's a lot of, that's, that's why, um, you know, that's, to me, that's why I talk about the stars being broken. That's gonna help you know, to give people a break where they may not otherwise get it, you know? Little student films, young filmmakers that wanna do fun shit, big stars that wanna do something innovative. So that's what we fucking with that. Do you plan on doing more uh, deaf comedy jam? Because you, you, you broke about, I said about a hundred comedians that were the hottest comedians in the world or had a chance to be the hottest comedians in the world. You know, Snoop, that's what I was just saying backstage. Uh, to, uh, this idea that Martin and Jamie and Cedric and Bernie and Chris Tucker and Bill Bellamy and Steve Harvey and Dave Chappelle, and I can just go on and on, all them niggas, right? There was, the, there was integration an opportunity where, where the white man would stand by the stage like the agent like, oh shit, let me find you a role. You know, oh shit, let me find you a role. Wow, this is a wealth of talent. There's money being passed around. Everybody's happy. And then the Def Comedy Jam went off the air and niggas like J.B. Smoove or Kevin Hart who was on the Def Comedy Jam, uh, they didn't get a break till they got a break, you know what I mean? Mm. Didn't you order us some food? Yeah, I was, yeah, I got some pastrami sandwich coming, vegan pastrami. You gonna like Where this? Where did me that though? You no, but it's a vegan pastrami. Nigga, you gonna think it's pastrami. Oh, because it's so much and lettuce and shit? And I got a meatball shit. sandwich for you with cheese and all that. Not real cheese, um, mm -hmm. but, but almond cheese. And you'll be, damn, you, know, you eat it, you gonna figure out you might not even need to fuck with no meat at all. You know what, you might be right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well I got this part of my show called Inside the Smoker Studio. Well, I ask you some everyday people, AKA real nigga shit. The real, real nigga shit, ask me whatever the fuck. Let me see that pastrami shit. Hey, pastrami over here, man. Yeah, I mean. Set it up. This is from, you know the place is called Native Food. Native Food? Yeah, oh, this, Indians not, made this? No, no, no Indians, but it's Native Food, because it's, it's all, <laughs> huh? It's a, it's a Reuben sandwich, this shit. Man, this motherfucker. And it's a meatball sandwich, Snoop. Look at that, okay. you ain't gonna. Yeah, I know you might not wanna eat it, but look at that motherfucker. Look at that, I'm gonna fuck with it, because you, you, you're telling me it's healthy. Yeah. What's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? I roll over, I light a candle, and meditate. Then after that, it would be early as fuck. I get up like 5.45. I meditate for 20 minutes, shower, get dressed, and I race over to my kid's crib, and then I meditate with them for 20 minutes. I take them to school. That's every morning, that's my, that's my routine right there. Do you brush your teeth side to side or in a circle of motion? I kind of do it the fucked up way. 
I'm a side to side nigga, even though I know I'm supposed to do it up and down, right? I do a little bit of both, but I really know that, uh, yeah, I kind of like that shit, right? Nigga, get up in there, get that, get it. This motherfucker, you know? <laughs> it's the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker for real. Ginger or Marianne or Miss Thurston Howe the third? I fuck Ginger or Marianne, but I wouldn't fuck with Miss Thurston. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't you? That bitch is old, old as a motherfucker. That's some Elizabeth Taylor for you. Truth, truth is, um, you're not fucking none of them because they're old. All three all of them. Old, right? Golden Girls. Thank you for being a friend, you old bitch. You. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite pair of shoes all time? My shell toes, nigga. You know that. Adidas? Of course. Walk through no concert doors. Yeah. I did not win. Hello. You would like that shit. Mm. Mm. Tell me that I ain't meatball sandwich, nigga. Mm. Mm. Healthy living. I ain't no chop no cow up for that shit either. Or oh, they didn't? No, fuck no. Mm. Where'd you get this meat from? It's not meat though, you know that, man. It just tastes like meat. Mm. I like that. <sighs> what happened? I hate it when niggas. <laughs> I try to never say hate. <laughs> hey, niggas be fronting. Mm. It's two words, but you ain't too two words. Be, niggas be fronting. Yeah, they be. <laughs> I hate it when niggas be fronting. Right, if you want, like rappers, they say keep it real, you want the honest to God truth if we can give it. I look for blank in a woman. You know what? I, I like women who like to meditate, or don't like to smoke cigarettes, don't like to eat animals. I like women. No, I honestly like girls who like girls, you know. There ain't nothing wrong with being a lesbian, man. No, I didn't say a lesbian. You could be a lesbian too, but girls who like <laughs> girls and just in general is good, you know. You're not a lesbian? I'm a lesbian person. Okay, well, that's what I'm, I'm saying. No, 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 I'm not, no, 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 I didn't say. My favorite position is? I like all kind of positions. Favorite position, you mean? Is I it the downward, role, downward, downward dog? Oh, yoga, <laughs> yoga position. <laughs> I don't know. You know, the thing about yoga is you get in more difficult positions so you can learn to, to be okay with difficult positions. In other mm -hmm. words, you smile and breathe in every pose. So after you did a twisting triangle and you come outside, somebody yell at you, say, bitch, I just did a twisting triangle. <laughs> I, I give a fuck about what you see. You know I mean, that's what yoga is. Yoga is this idea of the physical practice. Yoga is eight parts, but the physical, the asana part, the third part, is about smiling and breathing in difficult poses and then you take that same attitude off the mat. I'm a blank. That's the hardest thing to answer, niggas, because they ask me that every day. You know, like, what am I? Like, I don't know what the yeah, fuck I am. Right, I ain't gonna be boxing to that shit, because niggas do say, I'm an artist, I'm an, I'm an artist, but I'm a businessman, I'm mm -hmm. a, you know, you know, I'm a yogi and I'm a rapper, you know, a rap fan, you know, and they're not different, none of it's different. It's all not mutually exclusive. You know, I live in a world, I'm an activist, you know, I care a lot about Niggas that's locked in prison. I care mm -hmm. a lot about animal rights. I care a lot about gay rights. I care a lot about getting niggas jobs. I care a lot about all that shit. At the same time, I care a lot about, you know, freedom and happiness and promoting all kinds of well-being for people, you know, uh, which is kind of the same, but it's different, you know? So I don't really have a, I can't really say I'm a, you know, I'm a real nigga, I'll tell you that. I like that. That's the best answer you could have motherfucking got. By all that talking and bullshit. Nigga, when, like, you, when you said nigga, that you shit, nigga, you just won $100,000 on the motherfucking game show. I almost motherfucking blew it. That nigga was trying to make up shit. his mind. Uh, I'm an activist. Something. No, that ain't the right answer. Uh, right. I'm a real nigga. <laughs> 100000 That motherfucking meatball good. Or whatever it is. Church. Preach. Tabernacle.